once more, my wonderful friends. It's time for more stories. A story of Nick Beards. This is from Reddit user Bunny Doll. How's it going? This is Fan Beard. Oh boy. Something about this name makes me worried. Anyway, let's continue. Hey, Moonhorse. Hi. Songo. She's not here right now. It's sad. And the Celestial Herd. Bunny here. I sort of made this Reddit account after binging almost all of the YouTube content and wanted to share a few stories of my own. You listen to every single thing I made? Holy shit. <laughs> that kind of blows my mind. I happen to remember an encounter I had briefly back in college after reading the roommate Legbeard saga and had to write it before it flew out of my head, so here we are. First, a small introduction to the cast, Bunny, myself. I'm a quiet, shy bun who gets very, very bubbly when she's comfortable. I tended to make friends with people who didn't really fit in and was always really nice to people. I mean, I still am. I have a bad habit watching dumpster fire sometimes, so I unwittingly get involved with toxic people. I relate to this. I really need to curb that bad habit. At the time, a very straight edge. Sparrow, a cute shy boy who is also pretty straight edge. He wore cute nerdy glasses and was always bashful. I love to hug him because he's adorable. Domo and Co. A gaggle of friends that I seem to make out of nowhere. I'm grouping them together here because the they serve a pretty minor role in the story and and kind of the storytelling in general. Domo himself is a big guy, super nice and ultra goofy like me. He and his friends are always awesome to hang out with. Thread, the popular girl in Domo and Co.'s friend group. Small but sassy from what I remember. She knitted in her spare time and I'm pretty sure she was an narcoleptic. Her illness, sadly, resulted in poor grades, and her having to drop out of college. Aww. I was pretty sad about that. She's really nice. And Fanbeard. The short, obsessive beard that was way too delusional about, uh, well, everything. She was overweight, but still very cute at the time. However, she had this scent around her, shall we say. It smelled like something had expired on her person, if you catch my drift. Hated Thread with a passion. Okay, now that we have characters, let's go into the story. So I went to a community college after a very tough and stressful four years in high school. Another story for another time. And after spending a year fighting with my mother, also another story, about my choice, the price was a bit unreasonable, but the college was nice and the teachers were phenomenal. I was a bit nervous about the whole thing, mainly because I had a roommate who was friendly enough for the parents, but completely wild when they were gone. It wasn't a huge deal. I laid down a few ground rules, she begrudgingly followed them. She tired of them after a while and left to go to the party dorm, and I had the room to myself for a while. It was pretty sweet. Around this time, I hadn't talked much, if at all, to my peers, and mostly kept to myself in the cafeteria. Since I'm picky about meat, I choose to eat salads for the first six months in college. I'm fuzzy on how exactly it happened, but I remember sitting by the window one day and being awkwardly introduced to a large gaggle of people the next. This group was Domo and Co. And I'm not sure if it was Domo or Thread who introduced me. It's been a few years. Either way, I got to know them, and about a few months in, I was chatting away as if I'd known them my whole life. This really boosted my self-esteem, as during high school I was kind of labeled as the weird goth girl outcast who everyone thought was going to prom as Carrie. I did wear white, not by choice. I got to be silly with everyone, but I feel like Thread felt like I was a bit too extra at times. Looking back on it, it was probably the desperation of finally being looked at as a normal person and not as a freak that made me super zealous back in college. But back to the topic. I sat at the lunch table with them for quite a while before I met Sparrow. Now with Sparrow, I toned things down because he's a really, really straight edge, geeky type of guy. He could get rowdy when he had enough sugar in him, but 
When he was normal, I could easily see he was nervous around big personality types, i.e. Domo, myself, and another girl in the group. When I was sobered up, he actually liked talking to me a bunch, so we often would go off into our own conversations. One day, we're talking hush-hush from the group, he mentioned another friend of his that I should meet, and I readily accepted the opportunity. After dinner, he took me over to the set of dorms that catered to students who could afford single dorms. I secretly wanted to be in those dorms, but they were an extra 5,000, and my mom didn't have time for that shit. They really weren't that much better either way. I mean, yeah, you could control your heat and air in the single rooms, but they were cramped spaces that were built in concrete. It was almost like looking into a furnished isolation cell of a prison at times, which honestly made me kind of glad that I had a roommate. It's kind of creepy waking up in a room like that. Sparrow took me up to the third floor, chatted on and on about how I'd like his friend and how he's just as energetic as I was, which got me pumped, honestly. I love people who like to have fun. Until we came to the door. He knocked and she answered. Fanbeard was, of course, happy to see Sparrow, but kind of adjusted her glasses and really get a good look at me. Ah, uh, Sparrow, who's this? Oh, uh, this is Bunny. Uh, I've been talking to her a lot lately and I think you guys will get along. His excitement was so infectious that I just had to give a big, silly grin and put my hand out. Hi, it's nice to meet you. Fanbeard, uh, come on in. Uh, me casa su casa. <laughs> she chirped out, and I think she butchered it a bit because she was so excited to have a new friend. Her room was pretty tidy, but had this weird odor to it. I'm pretty sure it was cheap weed and sex, but I can't exactly be sure. Another thing I noticed was that... Her bed had some odd red stains on it, despite being a pretty pastel pink. I didn't comment, and instead chose to stand, looking around and complimenting her room. As Sparrow predicted, we did hit it off pretty well. She was studying to become a music producer, and at the time I was torn between studying creative writing or psychology. We talked a lot about music, where I found out the first relevant thing about the beard that would haunt me in the coming year. She was obsessed with Lady Gaga. Fanbeard said it proudly when she mentioned it and proceeded to park me in front of her pink computer and put on her favorite songs at a deafening volumes. At the time, I wasn't really a huge fan, but I had another friend who really liked Lady Gaga, so I just kind of nodded along and muttered out, yeah, it's pretty cool at times. Fanbeard did introduce me to the side of Gaga that I adore, and that's her powerful jazz voice. Still not a huge fan, but I, I thought it was pretty much more amazing than her mainstream stuff. Anyway, Fanbeard, Sparrow, and I talk for a few hours and then call it a day. Already excited to see them again at breakfast. And so breakfast rolls around, and I'm sitting and looking at the video that Domo was showing me when Fanbeard and Sparrow shuffle in. Hey, uh, wait, why are you sitting over there? Come sit with us back here. She points to a table all the way in the back by a window, and I politely decline. Out of my periphery, I see Domo glaring daggers at her. Fanbeard looks unfazed by this, if they're just used to it. If you want to sit with her, that's fine, Bunny. He pipes off, seeming a bit uncomfortable as he says this, but I shake my head and Fanbeard shrugs and continues on. Sparrow looks disappointed, but tells me that they were meeting up after breakfast, it was the weekend, to talk again. I nod and tell him I'll be there, and he follows on after Fanbeard. Once they leave, Domo starts talking again. Seriously, don't hang out with her. She's really fucking toxic. He wasn't super loud, but he was very seriously looking at me in the face to put emphasis on what he said. It seemed odd to see him so serious because he looked like he acted, like a big kid, but aged almost five years when he was not serious. When he was serious. Um, why do you say that? She seems nice. Oh, no, trust me, she's not nice. She's a bitch. I was hanging on his warning when Thread came over after getting herself an ample amount of food. Domo told her what happened, and she looked at me. Bunny, seriously, don't be friends with her. We're not gonna, like, put you out of the group or anything, but she's really fucking horrible. Uh, sorry, Thread, but so far she's been nothing but nice to me. I really don't see the harm of getting to know her. Thread kind of shrugs and finishes her donut in a sign of, well, I warned you, before turning to talk to one of the guys. Domo still looked a bit upset, but 
As Thread let it go, he took it as a sign to let it go as well. After breakfast, I meet up with Fanbeard and Sparrow and hung out in Fanbeard's room again. Yeah, you should totally not hang out with Thread and her group. They're assholes. Okay. The he said, she said stuff again. I'm getting kind of annoyed with it, and I stuck my leg out where I probably shouldn't have and asked Fanbeard about what happened to them. Fanbeard gives a very annoyed sigh. <sighs> she and I were like friends when we started college, but she overacted about me flirting with the guys. She got mad that I was more popular than her or something, and then she started spreading rumors about me. She's just a jealous bitch, that's all. I log this information away for later, and we talk about nonsensical stuff until I have to go back to my dorm. Once I'm there, I get a knock on the door, and Thread asks to come in for a while. She lived like three doors down from me. Hey, sorry about earlier. I didn't mean to pressure you, but Fanbeard really is kind of bad news, and I'm just worried. Again, I stick my leg out there and ask why. She gives me a more morose sigh. I, I don't want to mess up your opinion about her. No, you won't. Go ahead. What's going on? Thread looks at me intently for a while before taking a breath and starting to talk. So, we were all pretty cool when school started. She and I liked a lot of the same stuff, and she was pretty cool to hang around. But then one day, one of my guy friends came up to me, and he was asking about her because she kept propositioning him to have sex with her, even though he kept saying no. As her friend, I was hoping I could help because he had a steady girlfriend. When I confronted her, she went absolutely psycho and accused me of wanting to steal him, which I explained to her was not true. He has a girlfriend. She stopped talking to me and started to sleep with every boy who would let her. I took each story with a grain of salt, but Thread's story seemed to have more than a grain of truth to it. Fast forward a few weeks. I'm casually talking to Fanbeard about occult stuff like zodiac signs and perception and the like. She's also into zodiac signs and we exchange what ours are. We're both opposite signs. Cool. We laugh and she makes a joke about how it's best friend of her opposite. At the time, I wouldn't have considered her a best friend, but I didn't comment. Just gave her one of my, oh, that's cute, smiles. We chat more and eventually get to perception because we're studying the topic in my psychology class. The idea was more focused on depression and schizophrenia and the like, but she butted in and steered the topic to how she perceived the world. I really don't know how it happened, but I want to put this dialogue in as I remember it. So someone with depression can kind of see the world in gray, nothing looks vibrant. I find it funny because when I... Oh, you want to know how I perceive the world? It's like a giant TV show. Uh, what? Yeah, the world's like a giant TV show for me. It's like I'm the main character and everyone else is like a supporting character and stuff. Uh, yeah, that's interesting. I know, right? You're totally like starting your own arc and stuff. At that point, I tuned her out with my... Oh, that's, that's cute. Kind of smile because... <sighs> My pimp hand mooned. It burned. It burned so bad. I'm about to slap this. I'm getting off topic. I like where you were going with that. <laughs> By this time, I had started to learn some other things about Fanbeard that were raising my hackles a bit. One, Fanbeard loved to smoke weed, so the smell that I had placed in her room? Accurate. She would go to all the guys that she knew would carry on campus and beg them for weed. Two, she was a nympho and very, very proud of this. She would often brag about her sexcapades to me in Sparrow, and this struck a huge chord with me. She had a boyfriend who she'd been with for six years and didn't give a flying fuck that she was sleeping around on him. She had a bad habit of calling me in the middle of the night, crying about the fact that she cheated on her boyfriend for me to give her advice and then coming to school the next day as if she didn't give a fuck. It was... Honestly, incredibly annoying, and I wanted to knock the hell out of her. Three, she emulated Lady Gaga a lot. She tried to make clothes like her, particularly half-naked ones, and wear them on campus, which was awkward, because she tended to wear soiled or ripped panties that were clearly visible. Ew. 
All of these factors combined meant that I had a recipe for a grade A dumpster fire on my hands. She hadn't done anything crazy to me, so I was perfectly content with talking with her. Until that day. Ooh. It was about three months after we met, around five or six o'clock in the evening, when Fanbeard calls me up in tears. She'd just gone to her gynecologist because she's having some issues down under. Here's the conversation as I remember it. Hello? All I can hear is the sound of incoherent sobbing. Fanbeard? Uh, are you okay? What's wrong? She starts to huff and swallow a bit as if she's getting control of herself. Okay, you know, you know I told you about the guy I was dating, right? Uh, yeah, he said he's coming over next week. I thought you were really happy. Well, I, I told myself that I wouldn't have sex until I got here, but, but I need some weed really bad, and I wanted to have sex, and I didn't have a condom, and it really felt good. And she's speaking in a rush here, so I shush her a few times, never slow down so I can make out what it is she's saying. She calms and starts again. My mom took me to the, to the doctor, and I, I have something. I stare at my phone in shock before putting it up to my ear. I, oh my god, I'm sorry, are you okay? Are, are they starting you on meds for it? Yeah, but I, I want to have sex with my boyfriend on that weekend. Now I can't. I can't have sex with him without a condom anymore, or he'll catch it. But what do I do? She's speaking in a rush, so she has to start over multiple times. I just kind of stare at my phone again in absolute shock. Just, what? Fanbeard, you have... It's censored. It's incurable and needs to be treated. Sex should be the last thing on your mind right now. But you know I am. I've been waiting for this for so long, and the first thing we're going to do is have sex at- So, so, no, Fanbeard. No, you need to tell him what you've done and not have sex with him. It's not fair to him that he can contract something because of you. She starts crying after this, saying how she's a terrible girlfriend and he would dump her. At this time, I kind of reassured her that if he loves her, he'll try to work something out with her, but urge her firmly that she needs to come clean. She reassures me that she will and then hangs up. So that's the end of the story, right? No. I get a call the weekend after Fanbeard boyfriend was going to leave. Hey, what's, what's up? Yeah, I had sex with him. You what? I'm livid. I don't take STDs lightly, and she just knowingly gave him something that he'd have for the rest of his life. What the fuck kind of... Yeah, I talked to him and stuff, and after we did it, he told me it was fine. He was gonna marry me and stuff, so it's cool. It's not cool! You just willingly infected somebody! What if he wants to have another girlfriend after you? Fanbeard laughs at this. <laughs> You're so serious. It's fine. He's not gonna leave me. He loves me. At this point, I just silently hang up. I'm so disgusted that this woman, this grown fucking woman, slept around her boyfriend behind his back, contracted an incurable STD, and then had the nerve to have sex with him, and then tell him after the fact what was going on. Even worse, he's cool with it. I'm all for puppy love, but I just fucking couldn't. I erased her number from my phone and stopped talking to her and avoided her like the plague. Still saw and spoke to Sparrow, though, but ugh, that fucking bitch. No, never again. Moonhorse, yes? If you do read this, thank you so much for reading this on your channel. Thank you for sending in this wonderful story. I really hope Sango is able to help with the voices. She sounds adorable. But if not, I also look forward to hearing your voice for Fanbeard. Aw, she's great. And I'm sure she's gonna love this. That's all for now. Gotta go form my bunny army. Much affection, bunny. Okay, first off, let's address the very, very major fucking thing in the room right now. For those of you who don't know, what we have just been basically told, and what Fanbeard basically admitted to you, Bunny, depending on the state you're in, you'll have to check, is a crime. It is a crime. In a lot of states, if you have a sexually transmitted disease, you know you have it, and you have sex with someone, and do not tell them that is a crime, especially something incurable. It is very much a crime. 
Um, in some places, I think it can be um, pushed so far as to be something like a premeditated murder. Um, like, you... Maybe not premeditated murder, more like manslaughter. But yeah, it's a major charge. It's like, you fucking knew that this could happen. You knew and willingly didn't tell someone. Like, that is that is a big fucking crime. That is a huge crime. So, yeah. Um, I don't blame you for avoiding this person. That, holy shit. A lot of times, okay, a lot of times when I read Nick Beard stories from you guys, and it's the kind of stuff that I've always said, is there are mountains of these stories that are harmless fluff, that are just weird guy is weird, weird girl is weird, ha ha, move on, no harm, no foul. This, this sits in that pile, it's a very small pile, of genuinely fucking disturbing individuals to me. This is fucking horrifying. I cannot fucking believe that. And what gets me the most is the audacity. Just the, not just the fact that she cares so little about this person she's in a relationship with that she just continually cheat on them over and over, but also the fact of you intentionally infected someone simply because you need to satisfy your own needs. I, I have no words. That is, that is fucking evil, is what that is. That is evil. Like, no, there's no excuse for that. There's none. That's fucking horrible. And if she doesn't feel bad about it now, she should. Because I don't care if the guy is like, no, I'm okay with it and we're going to be married. I don't care if they actually are married. For several years, in fact. You don't have the right to fucking do that. You just don't. That is not how this fucking works. <sighs> Moonhorse is angry. Um, I am very happy that you sent me this story, though, Bunny, but I think I'm going to have to go hit something because, god damn it, how fucking unbelievable can someone be? This is... Ugh. Seriously, though, I agree with you. Fuck that bitch. Actually, don't, because we know she obviously has something. But <laughs> I don't even feel bad about that joke. That's what she is is horrible. I don't think I need to clarify anything either. But, yeah, I think everybody here would agree with me that if you do something like that, with that level of fucking intentional disregard, is just... Seriously. That's fucking evil. But with that being said, thank you all for being here. If you enjoy this channel, please make sure to like, comment, subscribe. I'd greatly appreciate that. And if you'd like to keep the lights on in here so we can keep doing this, make sure you donate to Patreon or buy something from the merch store. Or both. You can do both. That'd be really fucking cool. And I don't think maybe this isn't getting through because a lot of people, I guess, don't really look at the Patreon page, which is fine. You don't have to. Um, at the end of every one of these episodes, there is a thing that you'll see names on. If you donate up to a certain tier, your name will be in the end of this episode. Uh, <laughs> that's just, that is literally a thing. So that's the reason why there are tiers on Patreon, and you should go check them out. If you want your name to be constantly inscribed into Moon Horse history, that's a thing. You can do that. Anyway, I love you all, and I will see you in the next episode. Goodbye!